Um, if you want to see a demo, you can go to learn.acelerus.com. If you want to start training today, um, you can enter this promo code and um, get it. And if you have more information, you can call this number. So, Pete, you had some questions or observations? Yeah, I, I, a few things. Uh, I guess one of the questions I have is, how do you put a training program together? Um, you mentioned that you know this is a mental model and that ultimately what you're trying to do with this tool is you're trying to automate processes. And I, I'm always uh, struggling in my own mind with what to introduce when. Is it better for people to understand the tool and know what the tool does so that they can then create the right processes? Is it better for them to understand the processes first so that when they look at the tool, they have that context? Uh, and then in general, there are a lot of options, and I'm, I'm kind of reminded of the coffee aisle at the supermarket where there are oftentimes, for me at least, too many choices. And I need somebody there to, to help me figure out, well, what do I really want and what do I really need? So how do you go about synthesizing all of that and having the right training, whether it's BILT, whether it's CBT, uh, who gets what training? How do, you, how do you pull all of that together and know that what you're doing is right? That's a great question. First of all, it's good to have a lot of options, but you need to quickly zero in on uh, what's required. So um, part of it uh, stems from where uh, the client is at the time. You know, if there's strong process um, maturity, you can skip uh, the Eichel Loft kind of training. Um, although there may be targeted training, I, I like to think in terms of targeted training, which is you get in there, you get you look at requirements. What do you need to do? You look at the, 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 that's again another reason why the roles in the organization is so key. You look at who's in the organization, where they're at, what they do, uh, the, the relative level of process maturity, and then based on that, it might, you might look at some targeted process training. Um, uh, the second thing is, um, relative to the technical training, again, I like to let the, the client drive. I like to look, get with them, see who they've got, and then um, parse out the organization, and then start with that. I, typically, I like to start with the technical training and then go to the process training only if it's necessary to help uh, uh, break a log jam, get people on the same page. If it's, if it's quite obvious when you're going through and doing the um, uh, implementation uh, questions uh, that they have no concept of problem management, uh, and that's that's a very typical thing as as opposed to incident management. And there's a little bit of target training required on problem management. So I think the key is just giving them just enough, just what they need, as driven by issues or opportunities in the organization, and not blanketing them with oodles of process training or technical training that's not really relevant or timely. You know, it's great information, but doesn't solve a problem right now for us. So I think part of it is, uh, to answer your question as directly as possible, is getting a clear idea of the organization, the relative process maturity and, and, and technical training needs, parsing that out into bits. Um, generally, we use a spreadsheet that shows here are the, the typical roles pe that people need to do in organizations relative to this product. product. And then here's the process training um, options. Here's the, here's the technical training options. And then we, we cross-reference that. We come up with the smallest subset. And then we decide how we want to deliver it. So is it VIL sessions? Is it um, online learning? It's usually a blended approach where there's a certain amount where, hey, go off and look at these CVTs. You're the ops man. Go do this. You're the config man. Get this. These are the joint sessions. Let's do these joint sessions together. Um, some combination of those two usually works very well um, to, to drive to just what they need as they need it. So here's another question. You mentioned timely before. And one of the things I also wonder about, having been through not just service manager implementations, but other tool implementations, I'm always curious about what's the right timing. Is it better to train people? For implementation, I guess what I typically see is that training is one of those things that kind of gets jammed in toward the end. Yeah. And sometimes I think that that's just too late. I guess the other part of this is how do you balance 
your budget because um, most organizations typically only have so much money to spend on implementation assistance and training. And again, what I see oftentimes is training is where uh, where the cuts are made and that the priority goes to implementation. And I'm just wondering if that's the most sensible thing to do. It certainly isn't because you, you don't get value out of the tool without uptake. Now, having said that, there's lots that you could spend oodles of money on training and get no value out of it because it's not targeted. Um, it's not at the right time. It's just not, it doesn't actually achieve the objective that you're looking for, which is to get people using the system in a way that produces the outcomes you, you, you shot for out of the gate. So we typically do a little sandwich. Um, and by that I mean there's an, there's an important both for process and for tools. Um, you need some training up front, which is more generic concept orientation. Right, so the upfront training is more, this is the tour of the console, these are the generic concepts, can you see that there's incident problem uh, change management, can you see how workflows are going here. It's a general orientation, it's the onboarding to the product, importantly, without necessarily the customizations or configuration specific to your organization. So the general in the first phase of the project is let's orient on the project, on the product, and, and, uh, and the questions we're going to need to answer. Then there is uh, a second phase, which is here is some training, uh, here's some specifics for um, how we've tailored our tool, okay? Um, not everybody needs the, the generic things. In some cases, given the press schedule or for client needs, you may take the generic and the specific configurations together. Um, so, so, uh, that would look like this. You, you deliver a course. We go in. We talk about okay. Here's the incident process. Here are the uh, generic things and getting around in the system. And here are the specifics for ABC Corp um, that you're going to need to pay attention to. That's after the so that's the training as the tool is tailored or just after the tool is tra uh, tailored. Now, in addition to that, uh, what we always do, we always find that there's some targeted training options, and that that clearly is you don't want, by that I mean. You don't uncover them until you, you do the discovery, you ask the questions, and you find out, oh, geez, these guys need problem management training, process and organization type stuff. Or, uh, gosh, we are, for example, we have selected to spin up the service uh, uh, dashboard, service manager dashboard, so somebody's going to need some, some coverage of that. That's because we chose an option, technical path, uh, some subset of people are going to need some uh, training. So basically, Based on the discovery, we're going to find these needs. And that's sort of the third phase. The third phase is based on our, our discovery, these people need this sort of process training. These people need this sort of technical training. Um, and, and that's sort of how it unfolds. So does that, does that answer your question? It does. And it actually brings up another one, which is how effective is training or how um, useful is it in discovery? Meaning, you know, how how effective is it to do some training before you've done anything, before you've even planned your implementation? The idea being that the training would ideally shape loose a lot of things. It would help people to better conceptualize. You mentioned it a few minutes ago. Conceptualize the outcomes that they're after and make sure that what they do with the tool and what they do with processes are really directed at those outcomes. Yeah, it's a tough thing. I mean, I, I, I you know, I learned to wakeboard not, not, not long ago. And, and, you know, you got to take things in increments. You, you, uh, you get some, uh, basic information how to get up. I mean, uh, and there's a whole bunch of things you could learn later, like, well, okay, once you're up, you're going to jump the wake. I mean, oh, hang on a second. Let me just get up. Let the boat pull me and let me stand up on this board. Um, so I think, I think parsing that out and making sure that just the things that are that are that are that should be covered up front are covered, and just the things that are that are covered in the stream. That's I think that's what's most crucial about our role-based and scenario-based training is we know instructional design. We understand there's a difference between what's required on day one and newbies and introducing the product, and what's required once we got our hands around the product a little bit. We know that there's going to be second questions emerge, and it's just like a um, you know, the, the kids literally that showed me how to wakeboard. You start with um, you know, 
getting up. And then once you get past that, they're going to help you move around in the wake. And then they're going to start talking about um, jump in the wake and then lastly hot dog and et cetera. So uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, it sounds like training can certainly be, uh, and if it's planned right, and I think that's the key, it can, it can be useful throughout all stages of implementation. So before you start, during the implementation, and then after the implementation. Yeah, and we've all been in training um, that, you know, I remember taking my NCSE courses, and 90% in of it I could study myself. Um, some other percentage of it was totally not applicable to me, certain kind of active directory um, uh, organizations that we're never going to do. Um, so, and, uh, and then there was the, the small percent that was, you know, really targeted for me. And that's what we try to shoot for, to parse it out to the bits that are most applicable, put them there at the time that they're applicable, provide expert mentoring, provide a variety of people to deliver the stuff so that uptake is as it should be. We want the uptake so that they achieve the outcomes um, that you set out to do when you, when, you, when you said, hey, this is a good idea to implement this product. And it's non-trivial. I mean, um, there's a big difference between subject matter expertise, the ability to communicate ideas, and to get people to change behaviors, have new behaviors, and succeed with the product, and shoot for that last bit. Um, and we've, we've worked hard to, to understand how to do that and how to build that into our, 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 our training products and delivery. So um, that's all I have to cover today, Pete. Anything else you want to add? No, that was great. That was really good. Thank you. Okay. All right. So thanks, Dave. And remember, you can always learn more at Accelerarez.com.